It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fin side. Hey, Solo D, welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin, recapping the Dolphins' second-round pick of Penn State tight end Mike Gisecki, a player we talked about a lot, Paul, before the draft began as a second-round pick. What was your initial reaction to the selection of Gisecki? If Dallas Goddard hadn't still been on the board, it probably would have been a little different reaction. But I was a little pissed, and I really would have been pissed no matter what name it was if it wasn't Goddard. I think there's no secret that Goddard was a guy that I really liked. And the funny thing was, when we did our mock draft, I had projected Gaisecki as being a huge, great fit for the Eagles, Goddard being a better fit for the Dolphins. In the end, Gaisecki ends up with the Dolphins, Goddard ends up with the Eagles. So we'll see what happens with the two of them. But after sitting back a little bit, re-taking re inventory, I guess, in my head. I think this tells us that Adam Gase wants to use his tight ends a little bit differently this year, which is fine. The fact that he's got over a 40-inch vertical at 6'6 and can jump up and be a massive red zone threat, this could be a guy that, to be honest with you, threatens Devontae Parker's role in this offense more than Devontae Parker threatens his own role in the offense. Yeah, possibly. I mean, Mike Gisecki is a player that, I handpicked a while ago as somebody I did not want in the second round. And so I'm not just, you know, targeting three or four players that I want. And uh, and then Gaiseki was the pick and now I'm pissed. No, I mean, Gaiseki was the guy I didn't want there in the second round. And the reason for that is because I don't see him having any ability to block in this offense. And because of that, I don't see where, he fits in because I mean, the dolphins at wide receiver gave a lot of money to Kenny stills. They gave the the fifth year option to Devonte Parker, Danny Amendola, they, you know, 6 million a year. And also Albert Wilson, they also gave a three year $24 million contract to. So to me, guy, guy is a guy who is, who the tight end in this offense has to be able to block. I thought Dallas Goddard could possibly do that. I don't see Guy Secchi being able to do that. And his blocking is not just bad. It's pathetic. And I, I watched many games in a row on him. And it, it just did not make a whole heck of a lot of sense to get another wide receiver type at that tight end position. I can see that. And one of the things that I'm starting to think is Adam Gase may have said he wants to run the Mike Martz style of offense, but I think he's going to be putting his own spin on it. I think we're going to see a lot of four and five wide sets this year. Things to really let Ryan Tannehill have a chance to excel on the stat sheet. And if you get Gaiseki out on the field, don't get me wrong. If we take blocking completely out of the equation, Lord knows Gaiseki has. Gaiseki is a dynamic threat at tight end as far as receiving, as far as moving the chains on third down, an issue that we've had problems with in the past, as far as being a red zone threat, an issue we've had problems with in the past. So maybe he comes in a lot on third downs, maybe he comes in a lot in the red zone, and we see some of the smaller, speedier guys that are more deep threats come off the field and create a few mismatches with this offense. So I don't hate the pick. It's just a different direction than I would have expected the Dolphins to go here. On the positive side with Mike Gusecki, when you look at his physical traits and his pure receiving skills, he might be the best tight end out of this bunch. And and that's the one thing that the Dolphins could really look forward to. And it's probably the reason Adam Gase wanted him. In the 40, he ran a 4.54. In comparison, Hayden Hurst ran a 4.67. Mark Andrews ran a 4.672. And Dallas Goddard didn't run. On the vertical leap, it was 41 and a half inches for Gaiseki. Nobody even came close to that at the tight end spot. Three cone drill, six seven six, and again nobody even came close to that at the tight end spot. And, and the three cone drill means a lot because it really measures the bendiness and the ability to get in and out of cuts at that tight end spot. So, the, the, but the biggest thing with uh, Mike Gaiseki is that he can 
win those one-on-one matchups with opposing safeties and opposing linebackers. So if Ryan Tannehill gets the ball out of his hands quickly and can diagnose those one-on-one matchups, you you might see that completion percentage stay as as high for Tannehill as it was before he got hurt. Yeah, and I will say, too, I know the big knock that we have on Gaiseki is the fact that we both like tight ends that can block. But as far as a casual fan goes, when when you look at Gaiseki at the end of this season coming up, he's going to be a guy that for a casual fan, you don't look at the blocking stats. You don't look at how many pancakes a guy had. You don't look at that type of stat if, unless you're a diehard, um, and that's not to insult anybody. So for a casual fan, when you look at this guy at the end of the year, I mean, he he is going to put up some numbers. He's going to have those third down conversions that you see a lot that the announcers like to talk about on TV. He's going to have those red zone receptions. He's going to have some of those critical plays, as you pointed out. And as Mike Mayock said, as a former volleyball player, he's got a lot of really good strength in the air because of the things that you're asked to do when you play volleyball. So... I mean, he's going to, at the very least, at six foot six, with a forty-one and a half inch vertical. All Ryan Tannehill has to do is throw a lollipop, and he's probably going to win the matchup. Uh, and that's not even counting the strength that he has in the air. So, this could turn out to be a very good pick, but the offensive line is still having to stand alone as far as blocking goes. So, we're really going to see this offensive line put to the test because of a pick like this. Yeah, I mean, that that seems to be what the Dolphins are looking to do is to take advantage of those one-on-one matchups in the passing game. And if it works, it works. Uh, but this is starting to look more and more like a true Mike Martz type of offense. We are discussing the Mike Gusecki pick, second-round pick for the Miami Dolphins, 42nd overall. So, Paul, what would you grade this pick? I'd actually give it – because I think it fits the scheme of Adam Gase, even though it's a direction I didn't want to go, I'd still give this pick an A- minus. because, like I've said a few times in this show, I think the guy is going to be a statistical monster. The only thing I don't like is the fact that he can't block, and it doesn't sound like that's what he's going to be asked to do. So for me, it's an A-. minus. The guy's going to convert some third downs. He's going to convert some red zone opportunities. I'm going to go with an A- minus here. You're you're a lot more generous than I am. I'm, I'm going to give this pick a C minus. I mean, this is one player that I did not want the Dolphins to draft in the second round, but they did. He also has the athleticism, so so we'll see how this plays out. But not a huge huge fan of this pick. I would have rather had Dallas Goddard at this spot because he can put his hand in the dirt and block. And even if it weren't Gaiseki, then cornerback Josh uh, Josh Jackson out of Iowa or, or guard Connor Williams out of Texas would have been tremendous value picks at this spot too. That will do it for our recap of the pick of Mike Gisecki, the tight end out of Penn State. 42nd overall pick in the second round. Great athleticism, limited a little bit in the blocking department. We will see how this plays out. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. And if it's not on the right side, it's not on the left side, it is on the fence side. So, Lodi, take us home. It ain't the left side.